Good morning. Hope everybody's doing really well. I think it's actually fall, finally, in the Pacific Northwest. It's been really, it's just been odd this year. Really late color for everything. And it's still, I'll show you. Anyway, I am uh, at a place I haven't been before. Uh, it's a, I've actually been to Beacon. It's Beacon Rock. It's in Washington in the Columbia River Gorge. And it's a cinder cone uh, of an old volcano so it's the inside and the outside is r eroded away and so it's the it's the inside of the of the volcano and it's just this huge rock that just juts up out of the side of the Columbia River and I'm at a uh, a park with a pier and the colors aren't quite where they need to be so um, let me show you so here's here's Beacon Rock looking pretty cool and I really like over here on the right hand side, we've got these, uh, uh, it's like this might be a swimming area or something, but there's uh, all these poles, you know, in the water over here on this side. Great leading line right up to the rock. And you can see we've got some beginnings. <laughs> uh, maybe when it gets a little lighter, it'll be a little bit more vibrant, but uh, some color here in the foreground. We do have a pretty nice reflection and some mist. So I'm totally, totally going to take that. Um, this is going to be a real simple, a simple shot. So I'm going to get set up and uh, we'll see what I can come up with. So here's my first shot that I've got framed up uh, about 19 millimeters, pretty wide, making sure I get the whole, uh, you know, the whole reflection in the bottom of the frame and making sure that I've got uh, like a, a nice, leading line from this bottom left corner um, as uh, this bottom left corner as it goes uh, as it enters the frame up here and up here at the top it kind of pulls your eye into the middle where Beacon Rock is and then I've got the the poles over here on the right hand side making sure that I'm not cutting off any of the reflections uh, of the poles in the water or the tops of the poles and uh, again just using that as a slight leading line um, to bring the eye in so it looks a lot like this. It's probably easier just to show you, you know, the view like this. I think this will work nice. It's just F11 ISO 100 and uh, underexposing just a little bit because that sky right up there is pretty bright and I don't want to lose any of the detail. If you look over here to my right, it's starting to pick up a little bit of color from the, uh, from the sunrise. And that is awesome. So I think a little bit more might light up as the sun continues to rise. And hopefully that mist here on the water will stick around long enough uh, for me to get a shot with a little bit more color and light in the sky. So I'm going to keep this framed up. And I'm probably going to move down the pier and shoot a little bit more, use a more purposeful leading line with those, with those uh, posts that are in the water. Uh, I like that. I'm going to try a, different, a couple different things. I might do a vertical down there. Again, just trying different compositions. You don't want to come someplace and just do one composition, one orientation, and you get home. And what looked great on the back of the camera just doesn't translate well when you actually see it, you know, on a, on a big monitor. So we're going to take a couple more and watch this light happen if it starts to kick off any, which, I don't know, it's kind of like fading. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get a couple more. We're going to move down the pier and we're going to try something different. I'm experimenting with just some different aspect ratios. So I'm trying to square and I'm kind of digging on what it looks like um, because it really helps pull, eliminate a lot of the stuff on the, uh, on the edges and just really accentuate that leading line of those posts in the water right up to Beacon Rock. So there you can see uh, the square crop. I've overexposed it a bit just so you can see the camera better. But it brings out the, uh, you can see the mist uh, floating on the water a lot better here in the, in the bottom of the frame. And uh, it really kind of helps pull the eye with those posts are a little bit bigger in the frame over here on the right as well. So I'm also gonna try just turning my composition just a little bit, right? Instead of just putting Beacon Rock center Let's turn it a little bit like this so we have a little bit more. It's, it's, it's off-center just a little bit. And then over here on the right, I've got a few more of those poles to pull, that view, pull the viewer's eye. Zoom out just maybe a little bit. Get one more pole. 
maybe something like that. All right, and let's uh, let's get the exposure dialed in. And I think that post here on the right is just a little close, so I'm gonna. Again, I can always crop in. I can never add pixels back, so I want to make sure I'm wide enough that I can crop just the smallest amount. All right, so I think that looks all right. And I'm going to get rid of those blinkies, make sure I'm not blowing out any highlights in the sky, and take the shot. I'm thinking that this might be a really good opportunity to use a 10 stop because this mist is moving across the water pretty quickly. And with a 10 stop, it ought to really just fill in all the voids and it could look really cool. The clouds aren't moving. They're moving, but not as fast as the mist. So I'm gonna put a 10 stop on and we're gonna see what it looks like. So let's talk real quick about your histogram. You'll notice, maybe you can see it, but I got a little bitty blinky up there <clears throat> in my sky. But if I pull up my histogram over here on the right, I know that those highlights aren't blown. Remember what you're seeing on the back of the camera is just a is just your JPEG representation of the raw file. And that raw file's got a lot more data in it. And you'll notice that none of my, my histograms are pushed all the way to the right, none of them. And I'm positive that I'll be able to pull that little bitty blinky up here back in post-processing. So, uh, that is absolutely fine. I don't have to have zero blinkies. What you don't want would be that. Because now if you notice the histogram over here on the right is pushed and you can see it going up the side of the, you know, of the, the right hand side. And that's indicating clipping uh, in your whites. And you'll notice that I've got a big swath now that's blinking. Odds are I may not be able to get all of that back. I'd probably get some of it, but not all of it. So I'm going to take two shots, and I'm going to manually bracket. I'm just going to take the shot that I just showed you that's, that's going to kind of um, for the foreground and for my tree line. And then the second one is going to be for my sky, such that it is. Unfortunately, it's just getting grayer and grayer, and there's no, there's, it's just, it's not, it's not getting any better as the sun comes up. So I think I'm going to pack it up and, and head out and maybe stop at another location or maybe walk around here just a little bit more um, and see what else I can find. But if any of these shots here at Beacon Rock come out, and I think they probably will, here it is right now. Here's my first shot of the day and also the shot that had the very best light. The clouds were really had a little bit of depth and color to them, especially over to the right side of the frame. Full reflection, a little bit of mist over the water, and I really like the, the photo overall. But I decided to take the same photo and crop it to move Beacon Rock a little bit off center and give it more of the leading line, make those posts more pronounced. Let me know which one you like best in the comments. This next photograph is a square crop with a full reflection in the water, but I feel like that the, the leading line of the posts gets lost because they're not pronounced, they're not really front and center with that full reflection, and there's a lot of uh, uninteresting sky in the foreground. So I refined the composition even further by zooming in a little bit more, bringing those posts right to the corner so that it's a great leading line to Beacon Rock. What I don't like is that I cut off, almost cut off the tip of that post reflection in the far right. Remember when I talked about the 10 stop filter? Well, here's the shot and I, I don't like it. Uh, I, I find that the mist is too smooth and the same with the clouds. So I ditched the 10 stop and zoomed in even further to make the leading line of those posts even more prominent. Don't mind too much that I cut the first two off in the reflections simply because it's such a prominent leading line from the right hand side of the frame. So one final shot. You notice when I include the entire reflection of those posts that I also get a lot of extra sky in the foreground that's not very interesting and it also pushes Beacon Rock further in the back which I'm not really a fan of. After walking around the park a little bit I really didn't see anything else. Uh, the colors just aren't uh, happening quite yet and some of them are just, they're, they're, the leaves are just going from green to dead. Um, so you can see up there, you got green leaves and they're just dead. Some of them are dead and they started to turn a little yellow and they're going from that green partial yellow 
just being, you know, dead and falling off. So we may not get a, a really good fall season this year because it was so hot in October and so dry in October. And now that uh, it's fall, it's cold and it's wet, everything's just kind of like going in overdrive. Uh, but it was good to get out. It's nice to be in a, in a location close to home just to be able to zip out. I'll probably come back and check this place out in another week or two. Maybe by then something will, something will happen. Uh, I'm planning on going out to um, a waterfall that I've been to once before. It's a little sketchy getting down to it, but um, there's a possibility of some snow next week. And if it's got a little bit of snow around this waterfall, because it's, um, it's not a really big waterfall as far as tall. It's not real tall, but it's, it's, um, it's gorgeous. The water is like a turquoise. And uh, I will leave a link to, uh, to the video the last time I was there. I'll leave a link right there for you if you want to check that video out. So probably going to head back to that next week, Monday or Tuesday, depending on what the conditions are like and uh, see, if there's, see if the conditions are, are good. Maybe a little bit of snow. That would be absolutely perfect. But anyway, thanks for watching. Appreciate it very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pass it on to your friends. Help my channel grow. And we'll see you next time.